bringing you a message this morning that is highly, highly controversial, and most people don't know it's controversial. But we're going to be going through this and making sure that we can understand what is going on within Scripture. This we're going to go through is King of the Jews is dead. The king of the Jews is dead. So, if the king is dead, then it's a myth. The king of the Jews. You can bury something in the ground if it was a king. If it's true, then you cannot contain it. It's impossible. But man that is flesh, if it's the king and then the king of the Jews is dead and also shows in the record of scripture that this man that many people call, they say he was 100% man and 100% God contradictory 100% contradictory because it actually makes no sense how can you be 100% man and 100% God you can do 50-50 you can do 60-40 it's impossible to be 100-100 however this mere man that if he was a god he wouldn't have died so the question becomes was Jesus Yahweh Shai was in the beginning of creation if yes then that would make him a god but we have a complication because as he lived they was able to kill him a couple of thousand years later, being a man, and be born again, contrary to what he even said. But the focus is not the king. The focus is the Jews. That's the focus of everything. Remove the king, the focus is on the Jews. If the king is dead, then there's no reason for Jews to continue. If the king is dead, that was 100% flesh, then there is no reason for Jews to continue. Jews don't mean anything but followers of Christ. That's all it's actually saying in Paleo-Hebrew. But if he's dead, what's the purpose of continuing? Because you are going to receive 100% of his inheritance as a flesh from that king. You will die and you're going to be buried in the ground as he. Or was this man trying to get you to follow something of another that is greater than he? And people just mistaking him for a ruler and a God, which was a prophet and a man. Did people mistake him? How did a king then would be called a God that was born of flesh in God? Yahweh was born of Mary and Joseph. Translated name is Jesus born of Mary and Joseph, a child. And it's giving you a history based on following. Based on following something. Not based on born king per se ruler, but born to follow something. 
And he was the king of that. He was the king of what he followed. Because he never turned to the left or to the right. This is what he's talking about. So, some history and mystery about this king who was a follower and a prophet. This Jesus, this Yahawashai, to show you that he was a mere man, even as a child. We see as he was, we had this man Herod, who was a king, who was a ruler, wanted to destroy this child that many people call a God. That's what we have to look at. I'm going to invite you over. We're going to look at this and we're going we're gonna to get some history on some things. We're going to go over to Matthew chapter 2. We're going to pick it up at verse 12 to see this history on what we need to go through. It says, And being warned of God, being warned of God, that they should not return to Herod, they own country another way. This is some wise men that people call. But verse 13 is what we actually want to pick up. We want to pick up and see what's really going on. Verse 13 says this. And when they departed, beheld an angel of the Lord appeared unto Joseph in a dream. He appeared unto Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise and take the young child and his mother and flee unto Egypt. And be thou there until I bring the word for Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. Clearly letting you know this is flesh. Because if he was a god, Harry could not destroy this child. Clearly telling you right up front. But right here, we're going to look at verse 14. And we're going to go down into some more. And it says, and when he arose, he took the young child in his, in his, mother by night and departed into Egypt. So the craziest thing is this. He arose and he departed into Egypt. Fulfilling scripture that most people don't know that he was doing. Fulfilling scripture. Because he even said that he was going to call us out of Egypt. Israel was spoken, even by Hosea, that he would bring the Jews, the followers of Christ, out from confusion. See, and when you see when they do this, we got to understand a couple of things. Let's look at um, Genesis chapter 14 and verse 21. See, because a king need followers. A king need followers. The same as we see with the king of Sodom. When Abraham has taken this people, and it says here, and it says, And the king of Sodom said unto Abram, Give me the persons and take the goods for thyself. Same as the king. Same as the king. Let's look at Hosea and what we was talking about. We're going to look at um, Hosea. We're going to go to 11. We're going to pick it up at verse 1. 11 in verse 1. And it says this. When Israel was a child, then I promised him and called my son out of Egypt. 
telling you the exact same thing. He sent him there. Not to learn the ways of Egypt, but he sent him there for a reason, but he's going to call him out of there. In 1 Corinthians, it says this in verse 11. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, picking it up at verse 11, it says this. When I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. See, a child would do foolish things, sinful things, even understood them as right being wrong. But being called out and prepared to learn the way of the king as children of Egypt, is being in confusion, giving you the understanding of what's happening here. We're going to get into a lot of spiritual things and find out some hairy things and straighten them out that goes on with this. That's going on with this. Because in Egypt is nothing but confusion. Nothing but confusion. But we have to see the silhouettes and in, in seeing what's going on here. And as he sat there and as he said, he, he's in confusion. We're going to look at Genesis, pick it up at chapter 25. Show you a silhouette picture of this. We're going to start at verse 22. It said, the children struggled together within her and she said, if it be so, why am I thus? Well, if you sent me there, why am I thus? If I'm there in this womb, why am this struggle? And she required unto the Spirit of God. If you sent me here, why is this struggle? But he, but he answered. Two nations are in thy womb, and two manner of people shall be separated from thy bowels. And one people shall be stronger than the other people. And the elder shall serve the younger. Clear as day. Clear as day. So they struggled within her. Where he sent them. And it shows you a little bit more here where we're going to sit there and look at a couple of things and then we're going to clear it out. In Romans chapter 9, picking it up at verse 11. Because he's telling you this right here. Because it's two children in thy womb. And for the children being not yet born, neither having done any good or evil, that the proposed of God according to election might stand, not of works, but of him that calleth. Wow. That's completely something most people don't expect. Confusion is there, but he's calling one out. And what happened is, one went ahead of the other. I want you to stay with me. I want you to stay with me on this. So one went ahead of the other. The first one was born red and hairy all over. We're going to look at that. We're going to pick this up and see how this works out. Verse 34. We're going to look at something. 2534. We're going to see something. The reason why I want to go here, we went past what's going on because Esau was red and hairy all over. His covering was nothing but sin. That's the covering why he was hairy all over. That's what the problem is. He was red with sin and he was covered 
in that. Esau, including, hated his birthright. Tell you that, Jacob gave Esau bread and pottage and lentils and did eat and drink and rose up and went his way. Thus, Esau despised his birthright. Despised it. Esau thought what profit is flesh and is going to die. Jacob, the sir planner is all it is came after Esau to exchange the things of the earth to exchange the things which is spirit. Let's look at this. Let's get some understanding here. We're going to go to Hebrews. Picking it up at chapter 10 and get a little bit better understanding here. We're going to go to verse 9. I want to put them all on one. Actually, I do it this way. There we go. And here's your key. It says, then said he, who, Jacob, the same way, us, lo, I come to do thy will, O God. He taketh away the first, that he may establish the second. He is strange in flesh to follow this king. So what about Esau? Esau came out first. But we got to keep in mind what Esau was about. We got to remember what he was about. So when you look at 2nd Adria, speaking up at chapter 6. We're going to learn a few things about Esau. For Esau is the end of the world. Is going to die. Esau is 100% going to die. All flesh. That's why Esau despised it. What, what's the right of being born first and flesh is going to die? Because he's not understanding that he need to be of the spirit. And it's saying Esau is the end of the world. And the sir planner is the beginning of it that follows Jews will begin the following of the Jacob the Sir plan of what it's talking about. Comparing the same thing on what we got to go through. To this end, we were still born, but we got to keep in mind the purpose we're here for. We got to keep that in mind on why we are here and why we have to go through what we go through. This is what I really want most people to really get and understand that we do. Because this end where we're born to, and it's saying the same comparing on why we have to go through and we serve planet what we was doing, but we are being followers of Christ. And it says the same comparison a woman when she is travail with sorrow because her hour is come, but as comparing as she delivered the ch of the child. She remembered no more the anguish or the joy that a man is born into the world. That's interesting, isn't it? The child. The child. The reason I want you to perfectly understand this we, actually let's go here I want you to really understand what I'm saying here we're going to look at Isaiah chapter 66 Isaiah 66 and we're going to pick that up at verse 8 I want to we're going to pick this up at verse 8 the reason why I want you to get this because you have to go through some things to understand what's going on. It says, who heard such a thing? Who has seen such a thing? <laughs> That's interesting, isn't it? Shall the earth be 
made to bring forth in one day. Interesting, isn't it? Now it's starting to make a sense. Was the earth made in one day? No. Why in the world people think they born Israel? You have to you have to say the same thing. People think they born or they just find out and all of a sudden they Israel. They just found out who they are and they say, oh, I'm Israel automatically. Just came out to one. Or. Same thing. Or shall a nation be born at once? They just come out automatically Israel. Then the kingdom will be no different than where you are today. The kingdom will be no different than we are today. If everybody just born Israel, when you get to the kingdom, the same thing is going to be happening there if you can be born in one day for as soon as Zion trivial you're going to go through something you got to go through some things you're going to go through some hell she brought forth her children you're going to go through some stuff in the main part we want to just get some focus on um I want to focus on a little bit nation be born at once once be saying once is talking about ever indefinite no that's why I saying at once indefinite no but people believe that they can be born as soon as you're born boom my children is Israel no the Hebrews I don't care how we look at this. Israel is not just born. Israel is tested and tried. The spirit of God promised the father, our fathers, and watches for the birth of the child, raises them up, Israelites, and trained by Christ. Birth of a nation is through Christ. The birth of a nation is is by Christ. The birth of a nation is the followers of Christ. The birth of a nation are Jews. I want you to stay with me. Because we have a lot of people soon as they find out automatically automatically oh I'm Israel. How is that true? Can a nation be born at once? Indefinite? As soon as you find out, boom, I'm, I'm hit. No, that don't happen. Many people forgot a lot of things here. Many people forgot some things here. So we got to look at the birth. We got to understand the birth of a nation. This is why so many people and so many of us, we get everything mixed up. But we want to make sure as we go through, we have to learn about what we need to be doing and learn who we are actually following to be Israel, to become Israelites. So while we in this womb, we have to make sure we eating the right things, having the right nutrients, having the right water, having the right Everything that we need, the bread. So when we are birthed, the nation is born. But it's not born at once. It has to travail. It has to go through some things. So let's look at the birth of a nation. <clears throat> That's the focus. The birth of a nation. And we need to get the better understanding and find out how this all works out. We're going to look at 
Exodus chapter 6. And we're going to pick it up at verse 3. This is why we have a problem. This is why the problem arises. It says this. It says, I appeared unto Abram, unto Isaac, and unto Jacob by the name of God Almighty. I want you to get that. By the name of God, actually, let me let me highlight it. I'm gonna highlight this all back in certain areas. By the name of God Almighty. That's what we he appeared to them by that name. Many people gonna tell you many other things that they knew the name, and he's telling you, I appeared to them by the name of God Almighty, and Almighty is telling you a lot. Why he's saying Almighty? We got God, but we got Almighty. Because Almighty mean a leader of a great army of hosts. That's why he's saying Almighty. That's the point of that. Almighty is talking about a leader of an army. Better yet, it's easy to show you than to tell you. Easy to show you than to tell you. We're going to look at Ezekiel chapter 1. We're going to look at this and start at verse 24. It's easier to tell you than to, than to do everything else. So we're going to look at verse 124. We're going to get some information here. And it says, it says, And when they went, I heard a noise of their wings. You see how this, 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 this is going a whole different way. And he's going to say some more. In the great noise, in like a noise of great waters, comparing the voice of the almighty, this leader of this great army, telling you this right up front right up front is telling you this and it says in the voice the voice of speech as noise of a host told you it, it's it's a bunch of them coming they there you see how sin in this speech of the host and when they stood they let down their wings now that's gonna scare the hell out of me because he said, by my name almighty, he came. This is how he came. But this speech was an utterance, was a language. But as many being with him, this noise was like a confusion of many men in the army speaking at one time. You kind of get the point now. We kind of get the point. Because he's saying, but by my name, Jehovah, I was not known to them. See, this, this, this is the key, but we're going to focus over here. When you look at verse 22, I'm going to show you something here. It says, in the likeness of the firmament of the head of, of living creatures was as the color of terrible crystal stretched forth over their heads above. These living creatures. Now, they tell you ahead of time, which we're going to end up seeing, but I'm going to just tell you ahead of time. These creatures is cherubims. And he, when he get to his destination, they stood down. They let down their wings. And we got to remember, Ezekiel was among the captives during this time. Actually, let's, let's, let's pull. I'm going to see if I can pull both. Because I might have to move this one, but I'm going to see if I can do both. To where we can get this we're going to look at Ezekiel we're going to go to chapter 1 we're going to look at verse 1 we're going to sit there we're going to see we're going to sit there we're going to see what some things that's going on and we'll see right here we're going to look at this parts of this great army these cherubim we're going to look at this great army how this great army was rolling and it says, and now it came to pass on the 13th year in the 4th month on the 5th day of the 5th month as I was among the captives, as I said, by the river of Chabar, that the heavens were open, and I saw visions of God. 
all these dang guys start showing up. Now, this is going to tell you a little bit more. This is going to tell you a little bit more. On the fifth day of the month was the fifth year of the king, Jehoiakim, captivity. But this is the key here. This is your key right here. It says the word of the spirit of God came expressly, exactly the point, came expressly unto Ezekiel the priest, the son of Bozi. And Bozi is none other than the Chaldean. But we're going to find out. We're going to find out a few other things. He says in the land of the Chaldean, okay, that should tell you quite a bit. That's why that's why forefather came from Abraham came from the same place. But that's beside the point. We don't want to get ahead of what we need to know. And he says by the river of Shebar, in the hand of the Spirit of God, was there upon him. So, the river of Shebar. He saw these living creatures, cherubims. And when you look at cherubims as like with flesh, you're looking at eunuchs. Same thing. You're looking at eunuchs. Let's, let's go down a little bit more. Get some more information here. We're going to drop down to chapter 10 and pick it up at verse 15. Because these, these creatures is is quite different and it says and the cherubims which who they are were lifted up this is the living creature that I saw by the river Shabar exactly what I was saying this is them this is what the problem is because he's going to get into the issue and it's not an issue, but it's an issue that people will have. Let's look at this. It says, this is the living creature I saw under the God of Israel by the river of Shabar. And I knew that they were cherubims. He telling you. And I knew that they were cherubims. He knew this. But here's the problem. Here's the problem. Everyone had four faces apiece. That's just a personal problem I would have. But it's a it's a spiritual reason why they're saying it that way. It's a spiritual reason behind that. But that's not the focus of this teaching. So we're just going to deal with that as it is. And it's just saying four faces apiece and everyone four wings in the likeness of the hands of a man were under their wings. Wow. And it goes on more. In the likeness of their faces was the same faces which I saw by the river of Shabar. Their appearances in themselves, they went everyone straight forward. Boom. When the voices of the Almighty, the leader of hosts, spoke, the cherubims let down their wings. That would scare the mess out of anyone. That would scare the mess out of anyone. So when this Jehovah, he comes and why he sound like a bunch of voices at once coming, he's not rolling by himself. Actually, let's, let's get a little bit more information here. Let's get a little bit more information here. <clears throat> We're going to go to um, Revelations chapter 19. Picking it up at verse 6. And again, it, it says, And I heard, comparing it was the voice of the great multitude. Okay, okay. Telling he's rolling deep. In comparing the voice of many waters, same thing. 
the voice speech and this there's all the, just a ton of noise coming as the voice of mighty thundering saying hallelujah now we got a problem now we got a problem Let's check out a bit of something. Let's go back a little bit. Get 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 a little bit of history. We're gonna look at fourteen one, and then we're gonna go back and just get some history. It says, "I looked and lo, a lamb stood on the Mount Zion, and with him a hundred and forty and four thousand, having his father's name written on their foreheads." So they rolling deep. They rolling deep. <laughs> but it gets better. It gets better. It says, I heard a voice from heaven as the voice of many waters. Just like I told you, it's it coming like a crowd, but you can hear all these voices at one time. And as the voice of great thunder, I heard the voice of harpers harping with their harps, telling you, something that you really don't want to do, you don't want to deal with because those harpers are expert hunters and archers and master builders and they the ones saying what we just seen in 19 that's why we, I went to 19 and I just want to make sure you just knew what was so and what they were saying was hallelujah that's what they were saying and hallelujah is telling you praise ye Jehovah, that's what they saying. As they roll up, and he probably kicking it in the middle or in the back, but once they get there, they sitting there, they telling you, praise ye Jehovah. And I guarantee you, you have a problem. But watch what happens. For the creator God, omnipotent, reigning and it's telling you omnipotent it goes right back to that same almighty almighty it goes right back to that almighty possessing unlimited eternal power all powerful and all authority in all things forever omnipotent are you with me See, we're going to see how this, 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 all this cranked up. We're going to see how a lot of this stuff cranked up. Let's go back over here. Though. Let's go back over here. And we're going to look at, uh, this is, we need to look at three, six real quick. I want to show you something in three, six real quick. We're going to look at this in three, six. As he said, because he made something real clear to them. And he made this clear to Moses. He says, more, I said, I am the God of thy father. So he's the guide of thy father. So he was a follower. He was the guide of Abraham. He led Abraham out. The guide of Isaac. He led Isaac life. You're going to see that. And the guy that Jacob, he was the guy of all three of them. Moses hid his face. He was afraid to look upon the guy. Exactly the point. And he goes on more and he tells Moses some stuff later. That's where we get back here. He said, I appeared unto Abram, Isaac, and unto Jacob by the name of God Almighty. But by my name, Jehovah, I was not known to them. By the name of Jehovah, I was not known to them. He told Moses he was their guide, sounding like millions of men rolling. And later, when he appeared as guide, as the Almighty, the leader of hosts, Christ, Jehovah, but Moses, he was making his name known to guide them out of Egypt, 
out of bondage. So he sent Moses into Egypt to call him out of Egypt. Are you with me? No, you with me. I told you this. It, it, it's, a, it's a little bit complex, but I told you we're working through this. It's real, real plain and real simple once we understood it. So the same thing is he did the same thing. And where do it start? That's the point. Where do this start? Let's look at some of this. Uh Oh, didn't want that to move. Let's go to Genesis. <clears throat> Let's go to chapter 2, picking it up at verse 8. Bingo. We do the trace and we find it here. And it says, And the Spirit of God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man whom he had formed. Bingo. We got it. We got it. In fact, got a little bit more in Second Chronicles, chapter six, in verse six, he says this. He said, "But I have chosen Jerusalem that my name might be there, and I have chosen David to be over my people, Israel." Bingo. We 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 got all this tied in. All this is tied in. Tied in to what we need to be doing. Tied in to what we need to be looking at. So let's go back over here to Ezekiel. Well, I'm going to keep this here now. And we're going to look at Ezekiel. Chapter 1. And you know, we're going to go down now. We're going to go down. Because we want to look at this birth of a nation. And we want to sit there and see what is going on here. <clears throat> and um, we want to go down here to 24. And we actually, actually want to hit verse 25. <clears throat> so as we go back there. <clears throat> He says this, and it says, and there was the voice of the firmament. It was over their heads, and it stood, and they let down their wings, which we, we got. We understood that. But watch this. <clears throat> it says, and above the firmament that was over their heads was a likeness of a throne in the appearance of, of a sapphire stone and upon the likeness of the throne <clears throat> was the likeness as the appearance of a man upon it. So upon it. This is D. This is getting really serious. So we got to understand some things. Because he's telling you the likeness of this. <laughs> This is how he was rolling. So this firmament, this expanse, this expanse was talking about the, the celestial bodies that you believe that being in a solid appearance in the boundaries within his service is over his head is like the throne. Meaning, meaning this, meaning this. Let's let's go let's go somewhere. In Exodus chapter twenty four, picking it up at verse ten. Is what they saw. And they saw the God in Israel, and there was under his feet, as there was paid work of a sapphire stone, and as there were body of heaven in its clearness. They are working as one body. They're working as one body. The 70 elders and went there and they saw this. 70 elders went up there with Moses and, and Aaron. Them. Tells you that in verse 9. Moses and Aaron, Nadab and Abinahu and 70 of the elders of Israel. And they saw the God of Israel. So it's showing you this. And 
It's showing you the bodies of people of heaven. These celestial bodies are there. And what we need to be doing. But Jerusalem is built up with sapphires and emeralds and precious stones. That's all you're getting into. So we have to figure out how all this works together. Let's look at it a little bit more and, 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 and have a conversation. Chapter 13. Tobit chapter 13, picking up at verse 16. It says this. It says, for Jerusalem shall be built up with sapphire. It's telling you right up front. With sapphire. In emerald and precious stone, thy walls and towers and battlements with pure gold. It's no secret. It's telling you all everything right there. Jerusalem is built up on sapphire, telling you the reaccounting in precious stones in this transparent, in a rich blue color, you see as the sea as you see the sky. It's trying to show you the resemblance on what you need to do. In fact, let's, let's go a little bit deeper here. Let's go to a little bit deeper. Here. Let's go to verse 25. And I said, I saw as the color of amber, as the appearance of fire round about within from the appearance of his loins even upwards in the appearance of his loins even downwards and I saw comparing it was the appearance of fire and it was brightness round about wow so Ezekiel saw this color this color of amber this translucent color of amber which is the desires as shown as a fire. Actually, let's just make sure we're not, we're not mixing anything. Let's look at this. We're going to look at Ezekiel chapter 8. And picking it up at verse 2. So the same thing is telling you. It says, And I beheld in lo a lightness as the appearance of fire from the appearance of the loins. Yeah, it's still going back into the same thing. Downward, fire, and from the loins even upward, as the appearance of the brightness in the color of amber. Sadly, the same identical thing. And that's the description on what you need to do. And that fire is talking about that desire on what you're supposed to be having. But it gets better as we sit there and how we need to have this brightness as we continually move forward on how this birth of a nation came to. Because he is who we're supposed to be following. Jehovah. Not flesh. Jehovah. Just keep that focus in mind. Because if not, and you was following man, you're going to end up what happens to man as according to flesh. You will promise you will die and your, all your works are in vain because it's going into the ground. But let's look at this. Verse 28. It says this. It says, as the appearance of the bow. Telling you a lot. Telling you a lot. Actually, I'm going to highlight just certain parts. The bow in is in the cloud in the day of rain. So was the appearance of the brightness round about. And it says, and this was the appearance of the likeness of the glory of the spirit of God. And when I saw it, I fell upon my face and I heard the voice of one that spake. Wow. But the bow. The appearance of the bow. Is in the cloud. In the day of rain. He's telling you the same thing. Actually, I'm going to tell you better yet. Let's put them both together. Let's go to Deuteronomy and pick it up at verse 32. At chapter 32, going to pick it up at verse 2. Because he's telling you right up front what he's doing. 
And if my doctrine shall drop as rain and my speech shall distall as dew, as a small rain upon the tender earth and as the shower, the showers upon the grass. But the bow is the worshipers in the cloud. That's all he's speaking about. This is all he's speaking about. So as he's saying this, we're making this clear for us. This is why he said, in the voice of one spake. So when he spake, he doctrine, he's dropping it as the rain from the cloud. It's, it's clear as day. It's clear as day. And we just need to understand what he's doing. So with these worshipers in the cloud, the day of rain, so was the appearance of the brightness round about, my doctrine shall drop as rain, my speech shall distall as do as the small rain upon the tender earth, which is us. And he should teach us how to become followers of Christ. Not a man. But let's go a little bit deeper. Let's, let's go a little bit more here. How this nation became born. How this nation was born. In Ezekiel chapter 2. Picking it up at verse 1. And he says this. And he makes this perfectly clear to us. He says, Son of man, stand up upon thy feet and I will speak unto thee. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. But what did he speak? What did he speak? Let's see what he spoke. We'll start over here and look at verse 2. Because this is speaking to Ezekiel. And it says this, And that the Spirit entered into me when he spake unto me and set me upon my feet that I heard him that spake unto me. Okay, so let's. we need to see what he says. We need to see what he's saying. And this isn't where they want to say the man, Jesus, it says he entered into me. You see, you see, the, see, the, see, the, see how people teach you falsely, but we need to make sure we're looking at things correctly because it entered into me when he spake unto me. You see that? Well, let me, let me unhighlight, highlight. The Spirit entered into me and he spake unto me. That's what he said. In this, the spirit entered into me when it spake unto me. And this is what he's talking about. This is what he's talking about. But he's saying something that's really going to make something really clear for us. Because he spoke something. He says, Son of man, I send thee to the children of Israel, to a rebellious nation that have rebelled against me that and their fathers have transgressed against me even until this very day. You can even move that up to today. You can even move that up to today. The same thing as we see here, you know, going to throw some things back in our face in Genesis chapter 12 and verse 1 what did he say here just keep that in mind just keep that get thee out of thy country from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that I will show thee I want you to understand that in fact, <clears throat> we're going to see some stuff Abraham did in 24, picking it up at verse 2. See a little bit what Abraham did. It says, And Abraham said unto his oldest servant of the house, we're going to see something Abraham did. He said to his oldest servant of the house, 
that ruled over all that he had. I put, he said, put, I pray thee under, pray thy hand under thy thigh. See, because once he called him out, he called him out of where the Chetelia, where the Chaldeans were. So he called him out, but you're going to see something that's really peculiar what Abraham going to do. Abraham going to do. Verse 3. It says, I will make thee swear by the Spirit of God, the God of heaven and the God of the earth, that thou shalt not take a wife unto my son of the daughters of the Canaanites, among whom I dwell. This is coming out of the mouth of Abraham. This is coming clearly out of the mouth Abraham, he's dwelling in where the Canaanites are, where sin is. But he's saying, he's telling his servant, no, you're not going to get my, my son a wife from here. Not from here. He told his servant, I'm going to have you to go back to my own country. We're going to see this here. Own country. And you know it's in there because the Most High called him out. Of it. He said, but thou shalt go unto my country and to my kindred and take a wife unto my son Isaac. Were they doing any different? <laughs> That's the question to you. We know it's sin in the Canaanites and Abraham living there. We know he called him from around his kindred because they were worshiping him and everything under the sun. But he sent us, he sent him there. He said, no, you're going to go back to where my kindred is. I need you to get me, my son, or somebody from out from the Chaldeans. The same identical thing you'll see here. The same identical thing you'll see right here. And people sit there and they talk about everything incorrect that they like to do. In Hosea chapter chapter 1, verse 2. Told him the same thing. He said, the Spirit of God said to Hosea, Go take unto thee a wife of whoredoms and children of whoredoms, for the land have committed great whoredom departed from the Spirit of God. People teach that this man wouldn't marry a, a physical, fleshly whore. And that's not the truth. She worshipped everything. And they was against the ways of God. That's all the, what the problem was. But they wouldn't sit there and say it's everything else. And they could have no valuable, any type of evidence of it saying that. Because the Most High is making it clear for the land have committed, create, have uh, committed great order, departing from the spirit of God. This is the clearest part in there. But watch this. Abraham sat there and he said this. And the servant said unto him, Peradventure, the woman will will not be willing to follow me. Let me get this all highlighted. Be, be to follow me exactly. See, you're still saying that how this following of the land, I must need bring thy son again unto the land from which thou comest. He said, So, should I take him there? Should I take your son Isaac there? Interesting, isn't it? Interesting, isn't it? Should I take, oh, I tell you what, if, if she don't follow me, is it worth me going and then go get Isaac? And then I bring Isaac there. <laughs> he says something that's really peculiar. I'll show you the same part where he has a mind of Christ. It says, And Abraham said unto him, Beware that thou 
thou that thou bring not my son thither again. No, don't, uh, you ain't bring him there. Same silhouette picture. Same identical picture. You're not bringing my son back over into that land. No. Mm -mm. Not going to happen. As they did with Adam. Actually, let's, let's look this out there. As they, as they did this one. We're looking at Matthew chapter 21. And we're going to see this in verse 37. See, because this is what happened the last time. That's why, not bring my son thither again. That's, no, we ain't, this ain't happening no more. We're going to look at something. But the last of all, he sent them his son, saying, they will reverence my son. No, they won't. No, they won't. Mm -mm. This is this is part of the problem. This is part of the problem. Reverence means showing a difference and respect them, and they didn't. And they didn't. But it gets better. Because this is what they see. But when the husbandmen saw the son, they said among themselves, this is the heir, come let us kill him and let us seize on his inheritance. Exactly the point on what they want to do. If they see that it's him, then they know what they can do. Then they know what they can do with him. That was the focus of everything. So when you see this, you would look at the same thing over here. You see the same thing over here. Actually, let me go here. Let me pull this one. Let me pull this one. We're going to go to Genesis chapter 22 and 22. And this is the main focus on what's going on. It says, in the rib which the Spirit of God had taken from man, made he a woman and brought her unto the man. So God brought his servant, his own son, to the husband. That they were still both in sin. Still both in sin. And what happened? See, this is, this is the point. On why he said, no, uh-uh. Because when I send it, what they do, they think they're going to seize it and they kill it. So he sends word. You can't send, you can't send it in, the, in, 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 in like he was doing there. Because look what they did the first time. Not again. No, I'm not sending him there again. I'm just, no, I'm going to send word. Actually, let's look at this. Let's look at this in verse 25. Verse 25, it says this. It says, and they were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. They weren't ashamed of this. But they still looking to seek that inheritance. Inheritance is one to where they, among themselves, they want to be heir. The one that they will inherit the estate of another. In this case, they were looking for eternity. Let's look at let's look at something to, to see why he's saying why he wasn't gonna send him there. I'm only gonna send word over there. Him there. I'm only gonna send word over there. But let's look at this. Let's look at something. Isaiah chapter fourteen. Get a little bit more information here. Fourteen and fourteen. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds wow right around those cloud of witnesses I will be like the most high hmm so why would he send his son there and not send word and if you want to be willing to follow that's why he said not be willing to follow me if I'm just bringing the word there 
See this over here? It's, it's telling you the same thing over here. She not be willing to follow me, follow me to this land. I must need to bring that son again. No, oh, no, no. He, oh, hell no. Uh-uh. No, that ain't happening no more. I'm going to send word. I'm going to send word. And then you, I'm going to send word and you got to be willing to follow the word. Followers of Christ. Let's look at, let's bring this a little bit closer. Let's bring it a little bit closer. Let's bring this a little bit closer. We're going to go to Jeremiah chapter 52. Pick it up at verse 10. This is a little bit different, but some people should get this. Some people should get this. Because it's telling you something that's really clear. It says, And the king of Babylon slew the sons of Zedekiah. The reason this is coded so beautifully, it's unreal. Because as I always teach, and it has a lot to do with names. How they function in the background. Because if we look at Zedekiah for what Zedekiah is and not looking at the function of what Zedekiah actually is saying, because he has it in a parable on this right here. He slew the sons of Zedekiah before his eyes. So what did he say? Zedekiah is, is he helped me to obtain my right. That's all that's saying. He slew also, all the princes of Judah and Rivlin. This is what the catch is. This is the catch. Let's look at something. Let's look at something. It says he put out his understanding of Zedekiah, exactly the point, including the king of Babylon bound him in chains and carried him to Babylon and put him in prison to the day of his death. Wow. Wow. He put him there into the day of his death. The same, again, silhouette picture. Why he already said, he's not bringing him there no more. Why is not bringing him there anymore? Let's, 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 look, let's look at this a little bit closer and constantly go back and go to Genesis chapter 37 and pick it up at verse 28. Because he did the same thing to Joseph. And we're going to see this here. Because they were doing Joseph in. Putting him in prison. They sold him. And it's telling you this here. If you go read it, you'll see what happened there. Reuben put him in the in this, in this pit to really keep him from his brother because his brothers wanted to kill him. So he put him in the pit while he went back to his father. Then once he went to his father, did what he had to do, can't return back he looked in the pit and Joseph was not there. They sold him. They sold Joseph. They sold him into bondage. They put him, so same thing as putting him in prison until his death. Basically putting him out of the sight of, of their eyes until the death. Same thing here. And it says, and there passed by Midianites, merchant men, and they drew and lifted up Joseph out of the pit and sold Joseph to the Midianites for 20 pieces of silver. And they brought Joseph into Egypt. Wow. You see, this this is what's going on. But Joseph, if he's following flesh is one thing, but if he's following Christ is something else. And he goes on here, and then we're going to see something here. And you see, Reuben was upset about it, and Reuben returned unto the pit, and remember, Joseph was not in the pit and rent his clothes, and that's why he was upset. This is what he was upset about. He wasn't there. 
And he goes on there. He says, and he returned unto his brother and said, the child is not, and I, whither shall I go? Where in the world is Joseph? Where is Joseph? These are things that they believe. But they did this thing and they did some things that was that was really wrong. I'm going to show you what's, what's going on here because it's getting really serious as it's going through here. And why he's saying I'm not going to bring him here again and why he only brings word. It says, and they took Joseph's coat and killed the kid. So the goat and dipped the coat in blood. That's giving you two silhouette pictures. They killed the goat and covered Joseph's coat with sin. Look at it. It's telling you the same thing. So they wanted to make the father believe that Joseph died. As he get down here. It says, and they sent the coat unto him. They sent the coat of many colors, and they brought it unto their father and said, This have we found. Know now whether it be thy son's coat or no. Wow. They brought this to Jacob. So the same thing is now they plan with this matrix type thing because they made Jacob believe something that was actually not true because it was part of the cover. -up. And you see this here. So Jacob, he knew that it, he knew it and said, it is my son's coat. And evil beasts have devoured him. Joseph, without doubt, is without doubt rent his pieces without doubt so making people really believe that he's dead and he wasn't that he was dead So these things can't be because it can't be true. So what do you to put this silhouette picture there ahead of him and fool people based on something else? Based on something else. And it's not true. So they got him to believe this. And as you see, even with the Matrix, you can see in the fantasy world, he was shot. But in the natural world, he was untouched. They're looking right at him. But they thought and made his father think that he was dead. So let's look at something. We want to look at it a little bit more. We want to look at it a little bit more. Let's drop down here to verse 7. And it says here, it says, In the Spirit of God of heaven, which took me from my father's house and from the land of my kindred, and which spake unto me, and that swear 
unto me, saying, Unto thy seed will I give this land, and he shall send his angel before thee. He will send an angel, a messenger before him. And thou shalt take a wife unto him, my son from thence. Did you catch all that? He's going to send someone before him. This is this is pretty clear. So the Spirit of God is sit there in Abraham. This is craziness where he's sending, going back and going back and sending this messenger there to get a wife for him from there. So when you go there, what do you must do? Because he's sending a message there. And calling you out. Let's look at something. I want to show you something. And and show you a little bit closer. Silhouette picture. In Matthew chapter 16 verse 24. And it says this. And we can see here. It says, And Yahweh I said. And then said Yahweh I unto the disciples. If any man come after me. Let him deny himself, take up his suffering unto death, and follow me. See, this is what this man said. Let him take up his suffering unto death and follow me. Christ comes into a prison, he comes into your body. As if we've seen already. And once he does that. He can release us. From this prison. He can release us from this prison. You can actually see this here. You can see some of this here. And um. We can go down into it. And see what is happening here. In Acts. In Acts chapter 5. And picking up at verse 9. Nineteen we want. The same thing it says. But the angel of the Lord. By night opened the prison door and brought them forth and said and said go stand and speak in the temple to the people all the words of this life. All the words of this life. So at night he released these messengers, these apostles, these people that would deliver the words to life of Christ to become heirs of salvation. He's making itself clear. It's not complex. He goes on more even when we still go back to what it's saying in Genesis. It tells us a little bit more and it makes it clear. He says, And if the woman will not be willing to follow thee, then thou shalt be clear from my, this oath. This my oath. Only bring not my son thither again. Just don't bring him back. Then you're clear. So the same thing is you following a voice, you're not following a man. The same here. To, to try to show you another silhouette picture, just to try to make sure we can get this. Ezekiel chapter 3, verse 17. Verse 17. And we're going to look back at that. It says, Son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. For that reason, hear the word from, hear the word that my mouth, at my mouth, and give them warning from me. And give them warning. But he says more. 
He says more. He says, and when he said, when I say unto the wicked, thou shalt surely die, and thou giveth him not warning, nor speaketh to warn warn the wicked from the wicked ways, the wicked way to save his life, the same wicked man shall die in his in his acts of sin, but his blood will I require at thy hand. So you're going to go get this message. But if you don't get a message, I'm going to require it from you. Because you didn't tell him. You knew it, but you didn't tell him. But he goes on more. He says, yet if thou warn the wicked, and he turn not from his wicked wickedness, nor from his wicked way, he shall die in his acts of sin. But thou delivered thy soul. But you, 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 you're clear. So he goes on more. He goes on more. It says, when a righteous man doeth turn from his righteousness and commit acts of sin and lay, and I lay a stumbling block before him, he shall die because thou has not given him warning. He shall die in his sin, including his righteousness, which he have done shall not be remembered. That's, that's, that's kind of blunt. If he die in those sins, even your righteousness is not going to be remembered. But his blood will I require at thy hand. So even if they were doing righteousness and you didn't warn them, then it's still on you. But you're going to make this clear. Nevertheless, if thou warn the righteous man that the righteous sin not and do of not sin, he should surely live <clears throat> because he is warned as thou hast delivered thy soul. So he's telling you. Now, with this whole look, did he take anything with him? No, he just said, is he going to take the, hey, you go here and you do this. You go here and you do this. So he did this thing that, that he did, that he asked him about. And the servant put his hand under the thigh of Abram, his master, and swore unto him concerning that matter. He did it. He did it. He, he was the promised seed. It shows you that right here. It shows you that right here. Romans chapter 9. And picking it up at 9. It says, for this is the word of promise. At that time, Sarah and Sarah shall have a son. Exactly the point. This is the word of promise. It was promised Isaac. And when you get back to that, we go back now to make sure Genesis, pick it back up at Genesis 17 to make sure we all on the same page. 17 and pick it up at verse 19. And you see here. And God said, Sarah, thy, thy wife shall bear a son in works in works and thou shalt call his name Isaac and I will establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant and with his seed after him Just making sure this is clear to where there's no mistakes the servant showed her the similitude of the promise which we're going to see so you're going to see this even with um with uh with with uh with, with Rebecca on what the servant did. You're gonna see the same silhouette picture on what he did. Actually I'll show it to you. Better yet, let me show you the same silhouette picture. We're gonna go to Genesis twenty four. So you have to see the similitude of this. We're gonna go to twenty four fifty three. 
53. This is the same servant that went to that went into the town for Rebecca. The same servant. And it says the servant brought forth jewels and of silver and, and jewels of gold and raiment and gave them to Rebecca. This is to Isaac's wife before she became his wife. He gave her he gave also to her brother and mother precious things. Showing you the similitude on what's going on. The similitude of what's happening. Let's drop down to verse 56. And he said unto them, Hither me not, seeing the Spirit of God hath prospered my way. Send me away that I may go to my master. And they said, we will call the damsel and inquire at her mouth. Because it's, it's on her. It's not on them. It's on her. This is the point on what, he, on what they're making. They called Rebecca and said unto her, Will I go with this man? And she said, I will go. I will go. So that's one of the most powerful statements you can actually look and see in the Bible that you'll see there. Verse 60, it says this. Really profound on what you see. And most people don't never pay attention to this that you see in the Bible. It says, and they blessed Rebecca and said unto her, thou art our sister. Be thou the mother of thousands of millions. You catch it. Be the mother of thousands of millions. And let thy seed possess the gate of those which hate them. That's deep. Because she's following based on her voice. So we need to see what's, what's going on here. We need to see how this works out where you see the similitude of this. Because she came from out of the out of the, out of the uh, Chaldeans. So I'm going to show you this silhouette picture to where we can get the better understanding and, and pull this all together. We're going to go to Judith, chapter 5. We're going to pick it up at verse 6. As it's telling you right up front, this people are descendants of the Chaldeans. This is clear. No if, no ands, no buts. These are descendants of the Chaldeans. Abraham came from the Chaldeans. Abraham became a follower of Jehovah, became a follower of Christ. And he knew him by the name of God Almighty. He goes on more, and he's going to speak about this. It says, And they sojourn here to for in Mesopotamia because they would not follow the gods of their fathers. Exactly the point. Which were in the land of Chaldea, which it goes right back here. We're going to look right back here and see exactly why they saying exactly what they saying. And it tell you, and it says, "Get thee out of thy country, and go f and 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 from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show thee." Drop down to verse five, and watch what Abram took with him. And Abram took Sarah, his wife, Lot, his brother's son, and all their substance, and all that had gathered the souls. And they have gotten in Haran, and they went forth to go into a land of Canaan, unto the land of the Canaan they came. You 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 tell me that. See, and it's telling you a lot about what's going on. Telling you a lot about what's going on. See, even in in Genesis chapter eleven, get down here. Verse 29, to show you even more. Actually, I might need to make that bigger. 
Yeah, 29. To show you even more about it, because Haran is talking about something. See, because Haran, which is um, which is his brother that actually died. But he talks about this. Abram and the court took, took them wives. The name Abram's wife was Sarah, and the name of Nacor's wife, Malka, the daughter of Haran. See, the father of Malka and the father of Iska. So they, they, they sitting there. He had two daughters and that son, Lot. And they sojourned in the land of Mesopotamia. And the main thing is why it's telling you that where they dwelled in this land of Mesopotamia. It's telling you quite a bit. Because they sojourned in Mesopotamia, but that, but Mesopotamia is just talking about between two rivers, which is which was between Hedekho, which they called Tigris, and the Euphrates River. That's where they was dwelling. That's where they was dwelling. And it's telling you there between these two rivers. It's giving you some information, which is telling you here. And they left the way of their ancestors and worshiped the God of heaven, the God whom they knew. So they cast them out from the face of their gods and they fled into Mesopotamia. That's exactly what I was saying. Between the two rivers, between Hedekal and Tigris. Well, Tigris is one of the same thing as Tigris, as Hedekal, but talking about between Hedekal and, and, and the Euphrates. And they sojourned there many days. Just what happened. And it tells you a lot about that because it's telling you about what's going on because they left their personal doctrines to data palms and riddles and they went down into the river where the sweet water was fruitful and worshiping the God of heaven. Technically, all this is saying. Technically, this is all this is actually saying. In verse 9, it says this. It says, And their God commanded them to depart from the place where where they where they sojourn and go into the land of the the Canaanites. So this is where now this is how they end up King this is how they end up over there. So now they end up dwelling in the land of Canaan. And they dwelt and increased there in gold and silver and very much cattle. So that's how they end up in Canaan. Literally how they ended up there. But we're going to see what happened there. Because now it goes back and more what happened in Canaan. And then when came up, we covered all the land of Canaan. They came down in Egypt and sojourned there. And they were nurtured. They was nurtured and became there a great multitude. So one could not number their nation. But just showing you that that actually was going on in Genesis chapter 12, verse 10 is telling you the same thing. And, and this is where, this is where this man telling them about, about, about uh, Abraham now. And he says, there was a famine in the land and Abraham went down into Egypt and sojourned there. And the famine was grievous in the land. So technically what's happening, it covered all the land, covered all the land. But as we go down, it says this. This is the history. It says, therefore, for that reason, the king of Egypt rose up against them and dealt subtly with them and brought them low with laboring and brick and made them slaves. Right up front. Meaning this. This is your history that we need to clearly get. This is our history. Exodus chapter 1. Pick it up at verse 8. Talking about the same one because Joseph was the one who saved him the first time. It says, Now there rose up a king over Egypt, so a ruler over Egypt, which knew not Joseph. This one didn't know Joseph. However, same thing. They became a great multitude of number. Watch this. And he said to this people, Remember this people, the children of Israel, is more and mightier than we. 
He's recognizing that. He's recognizing it. These, these people is in great multitude number. He, he sees that. So he goes on. He says, come on, let us deal with them wisely. And least, least is telling you about something that can happen in the future. Because that's all this is saying here. Something that can happen in the future. They multiply and come to pass that when they're follow if uh, they 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 um they fall of out of out of any war and they join also unto another uh, unto our enemies and fight against us and so get them up out of the land that's what he's trying to get them to do therefore they did set over over them taskmasters and afflict them with their burdens and and they built for pharaoh treasure cities so this is where this is where people are sitting there saying that um all your pyramids and everything was built by spacemen. No, it was actually it was actually Hebrews doing this. It was Hebrews who actually built those things. But they want to sit there and tell you everything contrary to what it actually is, but your 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 pyramids actually was built by Israel. In the treasure cities in in um in found them in Ramses but it's telling you everything here and it says, but more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew. And they were grieved because of the children of Israel and the Egyptians made the children of Israel save, serve with rigor. So literally that's why they enslaved them. That's all it's telling you. And they said, and they made their lives bitter and hard bondage and mortar and brick and made all manner of service in the field, all their service wherein they made them serve with rigor exactly that's why i said labor and making bricks and building building pyramids just what they did to them and they knew not joseph the king didn't know him so he he, he gonna treat him a whole different way he, he he gonna treat him a whole different way well but let's look at something we've seen this let's go over here to Exodus chapter 2. We're going to look at it a little bit more. Let's go over here to verse 23. Because this is showing you how they still, no matter what, they're not looking for a man. They're looking for a deliverer. They're following a spirit. It's going to actually show you a clear picture of this. You're going to see they're not crying for a man. They are not crying for a man. We're going to see this. It says, And it came to pass in the process of time that the king of Egypt died, and the children of Israel sighed by reason of their bondage, and they cried, and their cry came up to who? God, by the reason of, their, of the bondage. You see, it didn't go to a man. It went to a God. And it went to the God, the God of Israel. Not following the man. But he goes on better here. He goes better here. The same one they was following, you're going to see it here. It says, And God heard their groaning, including God remembered his covenant with Abraham, with Isaac, and with Jacob. This isn't talking about a man. This is talking about our God on who they follow. And it says, and God looked upon the children of Israel and God had respect unto them. He had respect unto them. People sit there and say, oh no, God don't know. He had respect unto them. The same as this. I'm going to show you something when we come back. I'm going to show you something we're going to come back. Genesis chapter 4 and 4. In Abel, he also brought his firstlings of his flock and of the, the fat thereof. And the Spirit of God had respect unto Abel in his offering. People said, they're like, what? Now, I don't get it. Yeah, you should get it. 
you should get it. See, because the main thing is, is what he did. See, most, why God to give respect under that? Because then he's being favorable to reconcile you back to him. So it ain't like he brought this here, but he brought something to him that he had respect to. Actually, let's, let's go here. Let's go here to, to get a clear part of this. Ecclesiastes chapter 9. Pick it up at verse 6. We'll see what they did. It says, in their promise, including their hatred, including their envy, is now perish. Who? Abel's flock that perish. Neither have they any more a portion forever in anything that is done under the sun. You, you kidding what he's saying? So they no longer is going to try to do the works of the flesh. They're done. They're done with that. This is why the Most High had respect unto Abel on him doing that. They said this, and he watched this. Go thy way, eat thy bread, eat thy bread, eat thy bread with joy, and drink thy wine with a merry heart, for God now accepted thy works. Go play with those apples. Go play with those apples. When you bring those firstlings and you recognize what you're doing about the flesh, we know what's going on. We know that what is going on. We know what is happening now. That's why when we recognize that, we can bring that to him. We can also do this. Because he, he told us what we need to be doing. He told us exactly what we need to be doing. You can see it here. Exodus chapter 19. Picking it up at verse 4. It says, Ye have seen what I did unto the Egyptians, and how I bare you on eagle wings and brought you unto myself. The Spirit of God hit them with incurable plagues. Incurable plagues. Uncurable plagues, he did. Let's look at this. Then they cried unto their God and he smote the land of Egypt with incurable plagues. So the Egyptians cast them out of their sight. They didn't go cry to some man. They wouldn't cry to God. And God did even more. He did more. Let's look at it. It says, And God dried the Red Sea before them. Exactly the point. He dried up, meaning he threw out all their ways of sin among the people. That's why he dried up the Red Sea. Most people don't even get the understanding of what he's saying, but he's telling you right up front. All the unrighteousness they committed in Egypt when God sent in there and smote. Actually, I'll tell you what, better yet, let's do this. Better yet, let's do this. Let's do this. So we can see what I'm talking about. 
713. And what happened? He says, if I shut up heaven, that there be no rain, or if I command the locusts to devour the land, or if I send pestilence among my people. Interesting, isn't it? He's going to send pestilence among his people. He's telling you right up front he's going to do. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and will heal their land. As he said, that's why he dried up the Red Sea. Tell you up front what he's doing. The problem is we try to read the Bible so literal. We don't get anything. We miss everything. In the Bible, never talking little. It's always talking in parables. Always in parables. The, the 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 craziest thing is this. People sit there and say, man, he divided that ocean up and they walk right through it. <laughs> it it becomes, it's comical. It's comical. It is comical on what people believe because they read the Bible 100% literal and the Bible is 100% parable. That's why he tells you. That's why even Solomon gives you those Proverbs to try to understand Proverbs just telling you similitudes. And people sitting there, the Red Sea is a similitude or something, and they sitting there thinking it's a, <laughs> I don't know what they think. I, I really don't. But he dried up the Red Sea before them. That's what he did. And he did a little bit more. I know some people saying that, dang. So that Red Sea thing ain't nothing. <laughs> and, uh, and he brought them to Mount Sinai and Cadiz Berni and cast forth all that dwelt in the wilderness. That was deep. That was deep. And it says this. So they dwelt in the land of the Amorites and they destroyed by their strength all them of Aspon and passing over Jordan they possessed all the hill country wow they possessed all the hill country and it goes on more and they cast forth before them the Canaanites, the Parasites, the Jabesites, the Semonites the Gergesites and they dwelt in that country many days many days they did this so now here's the catch lest they sin not before their God not before a man see, see this is what I'm saying you gotta look at the history they sin before God not a man they prospered When they did right before God, not a man, they prospered. Not making images and looking upon these animals and looking upon these crosses. They got all the tattoos on some man on them. You got some people, they, they even play professional basketball, professional sports. Before they get ready to do a shot or something, they have a, a, a picture of, of, of this man on their arm. They call him God or a cross. Sometimes they'll put their hand up over it like he going to help me. When they not sin before they God, they prosper because God hated acts of sin was with them. He's telling you right up front. 
when you did these things, when you following this lineage on how everyone not following a man, but they following a spirit, they prospered. Let's get down. Let's get down a little bit more. But when they departed from the way which he appointed them, they were destroyed in many battles, very sore. Yeah. So what they do? Oh, let's go make us, let's go make us some gods. Let's go make us a head of, 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 of this God. Tell me we don't do it. We do it like clockwork. We go in builders and, and most people, same thing like I was telling somebody, I was telling, telling my wife or somebody, I know we, we went to a funeral and um, they had on their, um, these images of these men who was over these churches at the time and many of them had died and gone off. And, and I was talking to them about it and I was sitting there saying, see, they, they seeing these men as gods. They all know they, no, they're not, yeah, they are. That's why you got the image there. Tell you what, if they saying they're gonna be like God and they're gonna be creating an image of God, you show me the image of God, show it to me. Show me an image that he took that is on the wall, that's in your wallet, that's in your picture book, you got on your Facebook, you might have on Instagram, Show me an actual picture of God. You can't do it. Why are those men in there? They're in that building because they're the gods in that building. They all dead. Every one of them was dead, except the active one that they have in there. Other than that, they follow the man. And they'll be destroyed, very sore led captive into a land that was not theirs in a temple, exactly, exactly a uh, temple. Uh, and the temple of their God was cast down to the ground, exactly the point, exactly the point. Because now he's appearing inside you as God. And the city was taken by their enemies. Right up front. Meaning, meaning this. Let's let's look at something. I want to show you something else. Let's look at Luke. Let's go to Luke chapter nine. We're gonna pick this up at verse four, and it says this. It says this. It says, "In whosoever house you enter into, thereby, and thence depart." But he's telling you what not to take. He's telling you what not to take. So he says in there, anybody you get to, there you abide and thence depart. But we need to see a little bit more. And whosoever will not receive you, and will, and when you go out of that city, shake off the very dust from your feet for a testimony against them. That's another problem we have. That's another problem we have. Why? Because many people are going to sit there and say, I got to go get my mother, I got to go get my father, I got to go get my brother, I got to go get my sister, I got to go get my wife, I got to go get my husband, I got to go get my children, I got to go get my friends. And many of them not going to receive it. And you are not going to depart. You're going to stay there. The same as many going to stay with that church. Same as many going to stay with whatever the place they go to. Trying to bring death to life. not kicking the dust off their feet as a testimony, but dragging death along, trying to think they're going to wake up later. This is what we do. This is what we do. Verse 19, it says this. 
it says, but now they are returned to their God and and are come up from the place where they was they were scattered and and have possessed Jerusalem where their sanctuary is and are seated in the hill countries for it was desolate. It was desolate. But I still go back to that same thing on what we do. See, actually, I'm going to show you something. I'm going to show you something that most people don't even like to see. And it's kind of... It should be. Most people don't want to don't want to look at this or or they want to try to put excuses before this. And there's no excuses to put before anything. In Exodus chapter 32, and we're going to pick it up at verse 26. This is clear as day. Then Moses stood at the gate of the camp and said, who is on the spirit of God's side? He ain't saying cousins. And, no, who is on the Lord of God, the Lord, the, the spirit of God's side. Let him come unto me and all the sons of Levi and gather themselves together unto him. The only reason I'm Paul, I want you to think about that. The same thing, people going to sit there, you're going to go there and you can stand there with your mother, your brother, your wife, your husband, your children, your friends, and some is going to go to one side and some going to stay on the other side. Don't sit there and play games with yourself. Because some people are going to sit there, oh, I'm going to go to the, don't play games with yourself because if that true situation came there, you know within yourself if you will go to the other side or not. Will you stand here? Okay, I'll stay here. I'll roll with you. Because Moses ain't asking that. All the people, all the women with children, y'all come over here and all the, all the husband and the wives come on. He ain't saying, he's not saying that. He's saying, who is on the Lord's side? But he gets better. He gets better. Actually, I'm going to make sure you can see all of it. I want to make sure you can see all this. Let me see. Oh, yeah, I want 27. The one I want you to see all of is 27. This is the one I want you to see all of it. Actually, let me put it on another one. Let me put it back yellow so we can see it. And he said to them, Thus said the Spirit of God of Israel, Put every man his sword by his side and go in and out from the gate to gate through, throughout the camp. Please tell me, do you see, except for thy mothers, thy brothers, thy sisters, thy wives, thy husband. Let's see, do it say that or see what it says. It says, including slay every man. You don't see except, do you? You don't see, but not these. It says slay every man, man or woman. It don't say slay every man, but these. It says slay every man, his brother. Every man, his companion. Oh man, this this is my wife. Slay every man, his companion. Man, man or woman. Oh man, that's my husband. Slavery man, his companion. Oh, but this is my wife. We knew slavery man, his companion. Oh, but this is my little daughter. Slay every man, his companion. Well, what? Okay, well, what is she over there thinking about? Slay every man, his companion. Every man his neighbor. Well, they well they just forgot something over there. Well, he he been over there too long. Slayed. This is what we get caught up in. These little little dumb games. Well, I want to I want to just wait for a little while. I want to I want to sit there and just study this for a while. And I get to understand it. Once I get to understand it, and I see if I follow God or I'm gonna follow this 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 Jesus man for a while. Okay, no problem. 
You go do what you gotta do. If not, this is our ruin. This this is our ruin right here. Actually, you want to tell you what? Better yet, go on ahead. Let me let me let me go down to door verse twenty. Let me go down verse twenty. It says, "Now therefore, my lord and governor, if there be any error in this people, including they sin against their God, not against some man, against their God, not against some man, but a God which is the God of Israel, let us consider that this should be their ruin." Exactly the point. You see, it don't say it against some man. This is gonna be their ruin. This going this is where we can get them. We can overcome these people. In fact, you sitting there, you sitting there, many people, you see, when we do it to this day, we go out there, something happened to one of our children or some or something illegal happened to one of our people, and they done fell, they done fell to the to the illegal laws and crooked laws of this society. The first thing we do, we get out there and we march. Yeah, yeah, black lives matter. Black lives matter. Black black lives matter. Really? Really? Yeah, I'm just showing you. I'm just showing you you. We got we got to see what we really are about. Black lives matter. Black black lives matter. News here, yeah. Black lives matter. They they um. They protesting today. They down on the on the armoire down in Washington D.C. and we hear them. And we should not be doing this to these people. We think it's very rude and very wrong. Hopefully, they be quiet. We only got to deal with this for a few more days, and they're gonna move on just like they normally do. But I just wish they stop. Technically, what they saying behind their head, because we keep thinking a man is going to change it, and they said we sin against th- their God. Let us consent that this is their ruin, not against some man, and let us go up and we shall overcome them. That's why they do it like that's why they can do it like clockwork. We chase everything but the truth. Everything but the truth. He goes on more. Tell me this. this he's not Israel, but he know more than us. And he's not Israel. He says this. However, providing there be no iniquity, Providing there be no iniquity, no acts of sin in their nation. <laughs> okay, bro. Let my Lord now pass by. No, we don't need to stop there. We don't need to. We do not need to stop there. Then we need to just whistle and keep looking other ways. Least their Lord defend them in their God be for them and we become a reapproach before all the world. But I promise you, everybody else gonna keep looking towards a man, looking for some fleshly leader. Look at where, where Martin get you? Where did Martin get you? Martin just taught you how to march. Better yet, tell you tell you what's more. Tell you tell tell you what's more about this. Just 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 to show you a little bit more what's going on here. What's going on more? If 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 we gather and sin in churches, they don't care. The truth is not taught there. So one must spread it, and it must be done. But I tell you something that 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 what's going on here, even even today. Where the truth is being taught, and it's being taught 
in a in a in a pigsty. In a pigsty. So it's being taught on YouTube. Clearly what it is. And I say that for a reason. YouTube is no different than Yahawashai going into their synagogues telling you with some truth to come out. It's no difference. Same identical thing. And I'm going to show you the differences. YouTube is free. It's free for me to be here. It's free for me to show you. I come here, I teach, and I go. When YouTube know it's something that they don't want me to talk about, they, they make it hard for me. They, they do things. They can cut the videos off. They can block videos. They, they do what they want. It's their platform. I'm at their mercy. However, I have another platform over on Vimo. Been there the same long, same, same, same length, same length of time that I pay for. I don't, I'm not, not like doing like them other guys where they sitting there over there, they using the free side where they just upload their videos. I'm live as I'm live here that cannot be blocked because I pay for it. Where do people continually run? YouTube. They complain about the same thing. They complain about commercials uh, being blocked. They complain about everything that YouTube does. And the freedom is over on Vimo and the first place we run to is YouTube. And you got to deal with the commercial. I see, I see the comments. I see them. Comments, people, man, oh man, they putting all these, all these commercials there. Okay. Well, what you want me to do? This is their platform. Oh, they blocked us again. They don't like the truth. Okay. It's YouTube. Platform is on Vimo. No commercials. Uh, no blockage. Clean streaming. Actually, better, better video quality. But where do we run? So don't sit there when we want to complain about something. It's there. This is why we had those issues. Because no matter what, that's what we hang out at. This is what we do. In Luke uh, chapter 10. Chapter 10, we're going to pick it up at verse 35. And it says, in tomorrow, when he departed, he, he took out two pence and gave them to the host and said unto him, take care of him and whatsoever thou spendest more I will come again and I will repay thee. Just like over there. I pay for that myself. I don't ask a dime for nobody. I don't ask, you don't see no donation buttons. You don't see anything there. Anywhere. Don't ask them for over there either. So I'm not over there trying to get you to fleece the flock of God. However, everybody's still going to flock to YouTube. So the question becomes is this. What is the ruin of his people? What is the ruin of his people? Because it tells you that. It tells you that. This shall be their ruin. Meaning what? For the past six, seven years, we've been running parallel to each other. People still run to YouTube. Where you get all the flack. So I ask you again, 
there's no difference. For most people thinking they're seeking a king, they're seeking a man, and they're seeking what they thought they had. And this is why to a lot of people, when YouTube is down, your king is dead. Not me. It's talking about the word. So when YouTube is down, your king is dead. It says this here and we look at something. And we can't do we can't do nothing but blame ourselves and we can't say anything about it because we're here. In John chapter 18. Picking up at verse 36. And he tells you this. Yeah, I wish I said, my kingdom is not from this world. If my kingdom was of this world, then my servants would fight. My servants would fight. Would my servants fight? And I shall not be delivered to the followers of Christ. Most people don't even get that. I will not be delivered to the Jews. I will not be delivered to the followers of Christ. But now is my kingdom not from hence. Most people don't even get that parable. Most people don't understand what he said. Because he's telling you clearly that I should not be delivered to the followers of Christ. So it's a dilemma here and it's a parable there that we need to really understand what he's actually saying. Pilate said this, thou saith that I am a king because he asked, because he said, therefore thou art a king then. He said, thou saith I am a king. You said that. To this end was I born and for this cause I come into the world that I should bear witness unto the truth. Everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice. This is clear. This is clear. So many of us believe this. So many of us are really following a man. We follow where the happenings are. So God is the king of sense spirit. So we need to clearly get what all this is and how it's actually born. And how this is born and how we are to take this on. In Romans chapter 7, picking it up at verse 14. For we know that the law is spiritual. For we know the law is spiritual. But I am carnal, soul under sin. That's why we can deal with the way we deal with stuff. Actually, let me show you this. The law is spiritual. Deuteronomy chapter 10, picking it up at verse 12. And now, Israel, what do the Lord require of thee? But to fear the Lord thy God with all, and walk in all his ways and love him and serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul. But we are carnal. We are carnal, soul under sin. We are so completely under sin. Even though he is the Lord our God which brought us up out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. And the first thing comes out of his mouth is this. Thou shalt not have no other gods before me. No other images of anything 
thou shalt not make unto thee any grieving image or any likeness of anything that is ab- that is heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. But did we do it? Did we do it? We are carnal. We soul under sin. We quick to look at something else. We quick to do this. So when we try to follow the lineage of the true followers of Christ, some people is following the man. And your end is when you hit the grave. Let's go a little bit more. Paul says this. He says, for that which I do, I allow not. What did he mean? That what he do, he don't allow. For what I would, that do I not. But what I hate, that I do. He hates sin, but he do sin. Because we are the examples of flesh. And if we doing anything according to flesh, things we might don't want to do, we do. These things we really have to think about what we're doing. Why? Because he's saying some other things. Verse 16, it says this. If then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that is good. Really. Really. That is interesting. That is very interesting. I'm going to show you why and we're going to look at something. Because besides learning about scripture, we need to know what's going on in scripture. In 1 Corinthians, it says this. It says this here. 1 Corinthians is chapter 11. Picking it up at verse 34. It says, if any man hunger, let him eat at home. If any man hunger, let him eat at home. If you want the word, you learn it at home, that ye come not together unto condemnation. Many people are going to gather unto condemnation every time like clockwork you're going to gather unto condemnation soul under sin they listen to these people who have transformed themselves into these angels of light And people will say they hate people that lie to them about the Bible. And they will sit right there and lie to you and even tell you that God wants your money. They'll tell you these things. And he says, I will consent not to the law that is good. I, I consent unto the law that is good. Saying this. Let's look at something. So then it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. The sin that dwelleth in me. So this spirit is dwelling in you. You don't shut up or I'll blow your brain. Come on, man. Don't hurt me, man. Shut up. Uh. 
and I was rubbing on that girl, man. This crack shit, man, it's got me, man. I don't got no control over it, man. I try to kick, man. That shit just be calling me, man. It be calling me, man. I just got to go to it. I need help, man. Come on, man. So is this really what's happening? The sin calls us and we just got to go to it. You tell me. Because this is what we literally say. We we'll sit there and say it calls us so we go to it. It wants us to sin so we just go ahead and bow down to sin. This is what we do. This is what we literally do. Let's look at this and go down a little bit more. Verse 18, for I know that in me, that is in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing, for to will is present with me. But how to perform that which is good, I find not. Wow. Wow. That which is good, I find not. Everything has to do with flesh. Dwelleth no good thing. Nothing good. And it is present. It's present. But performs which God commanded, which is hard to find. See, and he's saying this and making sure some things is clear with us. It says, for the good that I would do not, but the evil which I would not that I do. So to sit there, to sit there, so some people say, to fear the Lord thy God and walk in all his ways, to love him and to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart and all thy soul, to keep the commandments of the Spirit of God in his statute, as he had commanded us, these things we cannot do. Is that is that what we're saying? Because he's making this clear to us all the time. He makes this clear to us. Because he's telling you, in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. And the works of the flesh are made known. The works of the flesh are Manifest which are these adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, and idolatry, witchcraft, variance, ill emotions, strife, wrath, seditions, heresies, envy, and murders, drunkenness, rivalries, and such like. In my flesh dwelleth no good thing. So is that what we do? Because if we follow in the images of flesh, that's what we're doing. Because we're going to follow flesh, not following the spirit. The flesh should sit there and say it's okay. It's going to find a way to do it. And as it's saying, clearly, we're going to look at something. I'm going to show you something here. I want to show you something. You see how valid this is. Jeremiah chapter 13. We're going to go to verse 23. Can an Ethiopian change his skin? Can an Ethiopian change his skin? Or a leopard's his spots? No. We came from the Chaldeans. The reason I say that Because we are accustomed to do evil. But he hoping that we do good. But we are accustomed to do evil. So I say again, are we following flesh? If we following flesh, then the king of the Jews is dead to you. See, because Yahweh salvation is not dead. The Bible will tell you. He died because he went in flesh. Actually, I'll show it to you. Let me show it to you real quick. So we won't be. If we go to Revelation chapter 1, picking up at verse 18. Show you this real quick. Let 
It says, I am he that liveth and was dead and went in the flesh. And remember, I am alive forevermore. Amen. I have the keys to hell and death. That's talking about the spirit. It's talking about the spirit. That's what the spirit did. Because he's telling you this to make sure on what we need to be doing. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 7. It says, then shall the dust return to the earth as it was. It's going to return from which it was. So if you depended on the man, it's going to return back where it went to the dust. And if your spirit is click with that, it, then your spirit going right to the lake of fire. But it's saying in the spirit shall return unto God who gave it. But that spirit had to be right. So it's saying this as we wrapping this up. Now, providing I do that, I would not. It is no more that I do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. Wow. Because a lot of us going to always, no matter what, we're going to marginalize in our own heads. That everybody is sitting there want to say certain things and believe that no matter what they do, they are all going. Because they're going to marginalize it in their head anyway. And as Christ said, it says, this people draw nigh unto me with their mouths and honor me with their lips. But their hearts is far from me. No matter what. This is 100% solid statement. That's why I say a lot of us going to marginalize in our own head and make no matter what is being told to us right. And this is why. Because in vain do they worship me, teaching for the doctrines and commandments of men. They believe in these men. They're going to hold on to these men. They're going to hold on to everything. So this is why I sit there and I tell people, is the king of the Jews dead? To many, he is. He died when he died upon the tree. He died then. And he that one is not coming back. That's flesh. That is not coming back. But what went up off that man is alive forevermore. So he's dead to a lot of people. People can sit there and play this game. And they playing the game. They're not playing the game with anyone else, but they playing the game with themselves. And yourself is going to put you in the lake of fire. In fact, let's look at something. I'm going to show you something. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 20, chapter 14. Chapter 14. We're going to pick this up at verse 20. And it says this. It says, And so the multitude, the Lord, by the grace of the work, took him now for God which a little before was he honored, was he but honored. He's dead now, and now people honor this man as a God. Same as Jesus, a man, a prophet, is now honored as a God. He was born of Mary and Joseph. They honor this man as a God.
people sit there and they, they, they ask the question. I get the question asked a lot of times. They say, well, what about the people who believe that God still put the seed in Mary? And that's just a little technicality. You see right in the Bible, then you don't believe scripture. Because if you have that belief, you can't show one verse where he tells you, if you don't believe that that is him, that spirit that rested on this man, you have no clue that you will ever see the kingdom of God, ever. God will not put something in someone and then it's not allowed to come back into heaven. If God put a seed in Mary, then that seed is going to be able to go back to heaven. And the only seed he put in Mary was the word. That's why I said the seed is the word of God. The seed is not flesh. So anyone who's sitting there saying that they, well, it has to be this. It has to, all it says is this. And he didn't know Mary. Okay. How do actually, I just spoke to another guy who men are sitting there saying the same thing. How can Joseph go back into her and he can't? Because the same as Moses couldn't go back into the tabernacle when the Holy Ghost is there. He was not allowed to go in the same as Joseph was not allowed to go back in. But a lot of people are going to sit there and hold on to the doctrines and teachings of men. Many people are going to go to hell just on that on that belief. Because nowhere in the world he's going to sit there and ha, ha, ha. Oh, yeah, well, I know you was mixed up, but it's cool. No. You sitting there and you worship flesh. Because if he put that seed in her and that flesh became a man, then you saying that man is God. And God is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should repent. He's telling you up front in the law that he is not man. But people will sit there and say he is. So it makes one a liar. Either God's a liar or you're a liar. And it makes you the liar. He tells you constantly that where he's from. He even tells you in the end that he's from the seed of David. But people want to sit there and say he took the sperm from, from Joseph and put it in Mary. That is, it, it goes from one stupidity end to another stupidity end and it never shows you. And John is telling you this. We had to look at it a little bit more. In John chapter 6. In verse 42, <coughs> excuse me, to show you how many people didn't, didn't understand it, the same thing, how they see it, but they don't see what he's saying. It says, and they said, is this not Yahweh? Is this not Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? They was there. They was there. We know his father. We know his mother. How is it then that he says, I come down from heaven? They just not understanding that that spirit is resting on that man, which is Deuteronomy 1818. And he would speak all that he commanded. That's the only thing they didn't get. But you having people physically thinking that he's this person. And then the first thing they say, well, I don't think he'll hold me. Okay, no, you saying God is a liar. Don't think you're going to walk in on a technicality. Oh, well, well, I just have that belief and I'm still good. No, don't think you're walking in on that technicality. He said, if you don't believe that I am he, I told you I was going to do this. I told you in the law I was going to do this. And now you sitting there and you putting it on a man. You look at this and we're going to look at it a little bit more. So the same thing is this. Let's go to Job. Let's look at Job for a second. Job chapter 2 and verse 1. It says again, 
when the sons of God, men, came to present themselves before the Spirit of God. And Satan came also among them and presented himself before the Spirit of God. Okay, so what is this saying? See, don't let Satan ever fool you on what you think you're doing. Flesh is sin, and sin is flesh. So Satan shows up, and somebody still has Satan kicked up in there. So when you come to present yourself before the Lord, don't have that luggage with you. Because the always thing is this. The thing is always this. John 4. In 22. Ye worship ye know not what. Ye worship a man. Who constantly telling you. To put it all your eggs in the basket for a man. We know what we worship for salvation is of the of the followers of Christ. Not followers of a man. But people don't understand these silhouette pictures. This is where the problem becomes. In fact, that's Goes goes a little bit more. Genesis chapter um, twenty eight, picking it up at verse twenty one, as he says, "So that I come again to my father's house in peace." Exactly, you got to come back in peace. Then shall the spirit of God be my God. Yeah, you got to come back with no luggage whatsoever. That's why when you sit there and you come to your senses and you know what's going on, he tells you these things. In Luke chapter 15, going to 18, and that's why he would go to your father, I will rise and go to my father. And I will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee. It meaning what? I am no more worthy to be called a son. Make me as one of the hired servants. It's clear as day. Meaning what? I assure it to you. Leviticus chapter 25 because everybody thinks I'm a son I'm a daughter no he's going to tell you exactly what you are in 55 for unto me the children of Israel are servants for unto him the children of Israel are servants you can go holler I'm this I'm that I'm this <clears throat> it's telling you in the law what you are <clears throat> he says they are my servants whom I brought forth out of the land of Egypt and the Lord your God not following the man not following flesh Israel is who they are. And Israel are servants of God. And they not following some man telling you, I'm your shepherd. I'm your this. You follow me here. You follow me there. You look at my picture here. You look at my picture there. No. Israel servants of God and when you're looking for a king it's Christ it's not a man you're looking for a God he's the spirit of God which will give you the word of God 
to get you back to where you need to be. If you follow the man, you're going to follow the directions in the location that's going to get you 100% death. This is clear in scripture. A lot of this I know was pretty much hardcore precepts. And as far as with them precepts, a lot of it, I know some people might have to look at this a couple of times. But if you understand it, you clearly understood it. You can see what's going on. Because many people, no matter what, they are going to worship flesh. 100% going to worship flesh. If you worship in flesh in any way, shape, or form, you will die because your king and your king who say he is the king of Jews is dead. The king of the Jews never died. The king of the Jews has the power and the ability to rest on his servants and to control them on what he need to do. And he want to get word and give us warning on what we need to do to get right with him. That is the point of this entire teaching. And when you look at that lineage, any time that we went off, anywhere, anywhere, you didn't see we look to a man, they look to God. But people will constantly put this on a man, it's unreal. And they're going to constantly look to a man and they, they end is going to be the lake of fire. So hopefully that you guys got some, some understanding from this. And if you need to look back at it, look back at it. But as I said, many of us is going to hit the lake of fire. This is why I don't sit there. I never sit there and tell everyone, oh yeah, we all going here because that's not being truthful with anyone. Many of us, no matter what, is going to hold to doctrines and teachings of men. Those things is going to take us for a roller coaster ride, and we will end up, we will end up receiving the reward of what flesh reward is, and that's death. So, with that, we'll be picking this up on tomorrow. And we'll be over at uh, King James Bible University where we'll, we'll be going through the um, the books of Roman. We'll pick that up. So with that, uh, hopefully that each and every one of you guys have got some understanding from it. So until next time, I say to each and every person, Shalom.